Okay guys, we're gonna look at the triangle. Um, triangle is one of my favorite chokes. Uh, I absolutely love it, despite only having very, very short legs. Um, I find it's one of my most uh, successful techniques. Um, and I think it really comes down to a good understanding of body positioning and then how to adjust and how to refine the position so it's super, super tight and mechanically very efficient. So the first thing I wanna do is just talk about like what is the triangle and how does it work? Um, so, like any choke, what I'm going to be trying to do is cut off the blood supply to Steve's brain. Okay? I'm not focused on the windpipe or anything like that. With a triangle, I'm going to use my hamstring on one side, and I'm going to use his shoulder on the other. A lot of people, particularly when you first like, start jiu-jitsu, you're in this triangle position, and they think it's the arm that's doing the work. And it's not. It's his shoulder. Like by pushing these two things together here uh, with my leg, it makes it super tight and very, very uncomfortable for him. Okay? So that's my main goal. And if you understand that, like, the, the importance of utilizing the shoulder, you can finish the triangle from, like, all kinds of weird positions. Like, that classical defense where the person has the arm wrapped, like, oh, okay, the arm's not across the body, but can I push that shoulder into the choke? And if I can do that, then I can finish my triangle really, really successfully. And in fact, the nice thing about understanding how to use their shoulder is people will think they're okay until it's too late for them to even think about defending. Okay? So that's the really, really important thing. The way that we're going to start by setting it up is we're going to talk about like our, our hierarchy of triangles. Okay, so the first thing, pretty much whenever I do a triangle, my first goal is just to catch his head and his arm. Okay, I'm not going to worry about like anything else. If I can't get his arm and his head into the in, in between my legs, none of what else I does matters. Okay, it's, it's not going to make a difference because it's not going to be a triangle. So that's the first thing. The second thing I'm going to look to do, I need to control his posture. Okay, that can come through like using the lapel works okay. I could grab on his head. This works pretty good too. I personally, I like to grab onto my shin. Okay, and there's a further reason for that in a second. Okay, but I need to control something because if, if I don't, and like I cross these legs, Steve's just gonna sit up. Yeah, he's gonna create space and oh, I lose the position before I ever get to it. Okay, so number one, I trap the arm. Number two, I look at controlling the posture in some way. Okay, now, the way that you get the triangle like super, super tight is by starting to create a good angle. Okay, and for me, what that means that I want to be able to look at doing is being like seeing and looking into Steve's ear. Okay, so I'm trying to get all the way around to the side here. Okay, pretty much like 90 degrees on if I can. Okay, and this grip on the shin is going to actually help me do that because I can keep his posture broken and I can pull my own leg around the corner and then start to lock it up. Okay. So if you imagine, I'm somewhat flexible and I can pull my own leg to about here, which is okay. okay. If I grab my shin, I can pull it in so much tighter and get the position a lot, lot stronger. Okay. So again, I've gone here, I've shot, I've crossed my ankles, I bring this all into my chest, that starts my postural control, and then I'll grab my shin and then I can start adjusting from here. Okay. Once I get around the corner, and we'll talk about how to do that in a second, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this leg over and it's actually going to go down his back. Okay. The reason I go down the back is because I want to come over my shin bone, okay, not over my foot. My foot and my ankle, they're really, really weak joints and they're, like if Steve decides now to explode up, don't explode up Steve because you're going to break my foot. Like you imagine, if he does it slowly, you can see that all that pressure goes through my, my, my small bones and it's weak and it's hard to maintain. Okay, if I come over the top of my shin so that my foot is completely released, now Steve tries to pull up out of it, it's very, very difficult. So when I go here, if this leg comes up over the top, it's much easier to get over the shin bone. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> it's much easier to get over the top of the shin bone. And then what I can do is make a stopper and kick it out and get my legs in line. And then this is where the mechanical efficiency comes in. I'm going to put my legs like so, so they're basically like scissors. If you imagine this is like a cigar cutter here, I'm going to scissor my legs and I'm going to drive the pressure from one leg into the other, okay, and effectively just chop his head off, okay, and that means my triangle is going to be very, very efficient. Like the classical way that people first learn triangles is always like in this position, and if you think about it, it's not a very good way to put pressure against the sides of his neck, you know, that's why you end up having to like yank down on the head, have to bring the arm across and do all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, if I can turn it so I can now use like my quads, my hamstrings, my glutes, these are like the most powerful muscles that we have in our body, so I can be super, super effective. Okay, so going back to our hierarchy again. First thing, I've got to figure out how to trap 
his arm and his head inside. Okay, and next I control his posture. First thing, I bring my knees into my chest, getting okay? my heels to my butt, and I'm gonna catch in some way. Okay, from here, now I need to look at creating an angle so I can turn around the corner. I come over the top of my shin. Okay, so I'm going down his back first, pulling my toes up, and then kicking it out. To get the finish now, I maintain this position, and sorry, all that's gonna happen is I'm gonna do this scissoring movement. And you see, as long as I'm here, I can do this without even crossing my legs. Okay, the, the crossing of the legs just adds that greater control to the position. Okay, so that's the basic kind of order of priority. Actually, there's one more thing I should talk about as well. That is utilizing uh, my arm to get around the corner. Uh, come around this way, we can see. So again, it's something that you get taught quite a lot when you, when you kind of start jujitsu. is like, you want to hug underneath this leg, and that helps pull you around the corner. And that's very, very true. It's also, if the person stands up, that should be your first response, is trying to underhook this. Because if you don't, you're gonna get slammed on your head, and that is very, very uncomfortable. The one that I like to do, because everybody knows, right? Everybody knows if I'm in a triangle, I'm gonna be looking to underhook this leg. So what they do is they hide that leg, okay? So instead, what I'm gonna do, that's around this way for me, Steve. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hug his arm, okay? It's not about hugging onto his leg that's the important thing. The important thing is using this and stopping and being able to turn the angle. So when I'm here, if I'm square, I can use this arm to pull myself around the corner. And it does exactly the same job of bringing my legs into play, okay? And I can shut down the, uh, the, the position from there. So it's a really, really tight triangle, okay? So that's the last thing I look. And even sometimes if I can't get the arm, let's say they, they know about that, that, that option, I just need anything, right? So I'll go here, and I'll just grab his belt, and I'll start pulling myself around with the belt, okay? I just need something that's gonna help me maintain that angle and stop him being able to, to change it, okay? So that's our order of priority. First thing, we've got to get that arm in there. Second thing, we have to control the posture. That's going to be bright, bringing our knees into our chest, heels to our butt. Then we're going to look at, um, typically I'm going to re reinforce that by using my arms. Then I look to create the angle, and then I look to secure everything off that. Okay, but let's get into some more specifics of how I do this. So, we're going to look at uh, two kind of variations of the triangle, okay? One is like uh, a catch. Um, this is what Bradley always used to describe as like a snake jumping out and catching. And then the other one is a more of like a more traditional using and lifting the hip. Okay, but we'll do the, the more traditional one first. So we're gonna go from, let's say, collar and sleeve. So Steve's kind of stood up and we're here. Okay, so I've got my collar and sleeve position. What I'm gonna do is I wanna get myself into that triangle position. Okay, so I'm gonna step on his hip. I'm gonna lift my hips, but at the same time, I'm gonna pull him down into the triangle. Okay, so I'm using those two things to, to slot myself into the right place. So we're going here, boom. Okay, now I've isolated out his arm and his head's there for the taking. I'm gonna lift this leg up as straight as I possibly can here. Okay, so it's going right by his head. And I imagine this like a French guillotine. Okay, so it's gonna slam down across the back of Steve's neck and it's gonna help me create the angle as I turn the corner. And this should be like super violent. It is literally like I'm trying to chop his head off when I do this and my toes stay pulled in towards my shin, okay? From there, all I'm gonna do is I don't change my grips because this is my postural control to start with. The first thing I do is I just bring this up and I set that triangle position. So this is coming down Steve's back and then I lock it in. And you'll see, because I have this collar grip, it's already very, very tight, okay? Because that's replicating his shoulder at the moment, okay? So again, I go here and lock this one in. If Steve's really, really strong, or maybe I just don't quite have the right position, or he's defending, I'm gonna let go of the arm, not the collar. Okay, the reason I let go of the arm is because I can grab the shin and readjust, and the collar keeps the postural control. If I go the other way around, Steve's head's now free, and he can start pulling up out of it and start making my life hard. So this gives me a little bit of control, I grab, and then I readjust. And you see I kick this one through, then I hammer it down, and I turn the corner. And you'll see immediately, the second that I turn the corner, it's very, very tight, okay? If I need to go one stage further, I keep the shin, I let go of the collar, and then I look to underhook something. And typically, I like, really like underhooking the arm because it, it kind of cheats me around the corner, okay? It makes it very difficult for Steve to stack, sorry, Steve. It makes it very difficult for Steve to stack me, okay, or utilize his arms to put pressure on me, okay? And without actually really moving myself, I'm moving kind of Steve into the position. And then again, I can finish from there and I just do that curl. And it will be super, super tight, okay? 
So again, thank you very much. So I'm setting up my collar and, uh, collar and sleeve position here. Need to isolate out the head and the arm. I'm gonna lift my hips, pull sleeve down into position. Leg shoots up, and now at this point, I keep those toes pulled in. It drops down on the back of Steve's neck here and helps me turn the corner. So I'm pushing off the hip and locking this in. Okay, already I'll have started scooping that shoulder into place. I can then point those toes, leg comes across the back, and then it scissors, and it will be very, very tight straight away. Okay, if it's not tight, or maybe I'm just kind of in this position, I let go, I grab my shin, I lock it in deeper, and then I try to squeeze. Maybe it doesn't work, so I release, I come underneath the arm or the leg, and then he's dead for me. One other really nice detail about the shin is it prevents him from like blitzing around the angle. You always get those big guys, right? You shoot the triangle, okay, and then immediately they start turning the corner and smashing you down, okay? By grabbing onto my shin, if you come around this way, can you see? By grabbing onto my shin, come down a little bit, what happens is, as Steve goes around the corner, his head stays in the same place. Like if you imagine when Steve turns, he wants his head to go back in this direction, keep going around for me Steve, and then he will be able to pass. But what's happening when I grab my shin is, come down, when I grab my shin is, or I'll do it just by holding onto Steve's head, if Steve tries to turn the corner, he can't get that line. So when I grab here, all that happens is as Steve turns the corner, it actually puts the choke on tighter because he's now forcing his own head into the hamstring. Okay, so it works really, really well for me. Okay, one more time, all the way through. And here, I elevate, I lift, I drop this one down. Okay, first thing, I cross in some way as best as I can, leg coming down the back, strong toes. Grab the shin, readjust again so it's super tight, and then I pull myself around the corner if they're not already tapping from there. Okay, so that's kind of my priorities when I, when I do this. The nice thing about um, setting up in this position is I don't need to re-step on the hip. I've created a little bit of the angle um, within the triangle, within the initial setup itself. All right. The second version is like the catch version. Okay. And it's like, a, like I said, it's just a snake coming out. So what happens is you like, maybe you see this little bit of separation from his elbow. And what you do is you just lift your hips and you jump and pull. Okay. So right now, unlike the other version, I've, I don't have any angle to work with at all. Okay, I have Steve's head and his arm and I have some posture control, but I don't have to work with that. If you remember in the first one I said, when you lift up, this chops down and helps me get to the angle. So I have a little bit of angle. In this one, we're square. So what am I gonna do? Honestly, it's very, very similar to start with. I grab his shin, and this time I will grab his head as well. I wanna double up on that so he really can't escape. Now from here, I'm gonna step on his hip. And a really important detail is I have to keep this knee tight. Okay, if I let this go loose, Steve's just gonna pull his elbow back and I won't have the triangle anymore. So what I do is I keep this tight and now I step on his hip, turn the corner, and then when I relock, spin around a little bit, can you see? This way. When I relock, I use the friction of my leg up his, uh, his shoulder. And you'll see that already starts to put the pressure into the triangle. So when I go here, it goes up, and then I lock it, the same way it gets locked. It goes down the back first, my toes pull up, and then I stamp it in, and I get the finish from there. Okay. <laughs> Steve's getting very, very red, and I'm getting a little bit concerned. So again, I'm here, I use the second method, I just see there's that little bit of space, I jump, catch, and bring him down. Okay, so I'm pulling him in. I'm now gonna go shin, and I'm gonna go head to control. That's gonna allow me to step, and I can push and turn the corner, okay? Again, keeping my, my knee in nice and tight. From here, this one's gonna slide up. I'm gonna try and catch his shoulder as best as I can, lock down his spine, pull my toes up, kick it out, okay? And then, again, I can underhook as necessary. So, the, the, the individual steps are pretty much the same, but the order of priority is adjusts kind of based on um, what, the, what the person does or how I enter into it, okay? So that's our... Uh, basic kind of understanding of the triangle with two different variations of the setup. And like I said, one of the most important things is I love that shin grip. That shin grip, it makes it so, so tight. It really makes it difficult for um, the person to maintain their posture. Um, and I can cheat a lot of the angles, okay? So a couple of things that you'll kind of commonly see. We've already discussed one of them. I'm going to try and do these nice and lightly for Steve. 
Uh, so, just go to your knees please, Steve. Let's say I've set up the triangle here. We already talked about that, the person kind of punching their way around the corner here. Yeah, he starts to turn the corner. If I have this shin here, sorry, this uh, forearm on the, the shin, when he turns the corner, he just bites in deeper into the triangle. Makes it really, really nasty. And it, it, like you'll feel it, if you want to practice it, just check it out. Like the, uh, the, the, the suddenly you realize when you turn in the corner, it's not really a good defense and you just get your head squashed. Um, the other thing that you can do as well, uh, let me back up. When I'm here, I shoot that triangle up, okay? And now Steve's kind of more up on his feet, so he's standing up, really pressuring in. Sometimes what I like to do, if I'm in this position, I feel like I'm getting squashed. I'm gonna keep hold of my shin, and I'm gonna pull myself underneath. And then eventually, he's gonna come down towards the ground. The nice thing about this is all we've done is change position, and I can close the space off exactly the same way. Okay, so one more time. And so when I when I hook this up, uh, you can have this arm wiggle, it doesn't matter too much. Like I say, it's not about the arm, it's about the shoulder. Okay. So when I hook this up, if Steve stands up and he's a little bit too strong for me, he's not really turning that corner, so he's just really trying to stack me. I can just underhook his legs, or I can push off his leg. I can go this one first, the other one first, but I pull myself around. That completely changes the angle, and I bring it down and I keep it tight. And again, because I'm holding my shin, there's not really a lot of... I, the beautiful thing about this is it doesn't take my leg strength to keep the position locked. Like I'm using good mechanical efficiency by holding this in. And it works really, really well. The other one that you'll kind of quite commonly encounter, I touched on it earlier, is when you're here in this position and they're, they're kind of like hugging that leg. Yeah. And they think, this is a really great... Uh, sorry, Steve. Yeah. This is a really great um, defense. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I know this is about the, uh, the shoulder, right? So I'm going to focus, when I go here, I'm going to use this leg and I'm going to try and pull that in around the corner. So I'm lifting and punching that in as best as I can. So when I go here, I bring it and you see that goes into position. Now I look to underhook. And again, because of, uh, because of the way that we're pulling that shoulder in, it's very, very tight and it's on very, very fast. Okay, if I do it a little bit, a little bit lighter for Steve. Okay, I'm pulling my leg in, so I'm using my, my quad to punch that up. My quad's probably gonna be stronger than his delt, particularly when I'm in this configuration. And then I just look to come around the corner, and you'll see that he's in this terrible position. Sorry, Steve. And it doesn't matter that I don't have the arm across the body at all. Okay, so a lot of people get really caught up about bringing this off, and it's, it's not important. It's about the shoulder and getting that shoulder in. Okay guys, so hopefully that, uh, that was informative for you guys uh, and it helped you adjust your triangles and realize the importance of the shin grip.